Welcome back to Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig. You know, sometimes we don't TIG weld everything. We use that other welding process. So I've solicited the help of Bob Moffitt, head welding instructor at Cali County College here in our Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, so today we're going to do a, a horizontal weld, and I'm going to let Bob tell me a little bit about it and where it fits in the industry. Wyatt, this weld fits into general fabrication of structural materials. This is everybody's least favorite weld. And it's, why is that? Why? Because the last part of the weld out here on the outside, the cap, we have to run them in multiple stringer beads. It's like putting your signature out there in space. That's why everybody hates this weld, and we kind of nickname it the horrible zonal <laughs> instead of horizontal. <laughs> I see. It's, it's really not that bad. Doing this weld and training for it will make you weld better on all your fillet welds in horizontal. Uh, stacking multiple beads to get a, a certain weld profile size. But a groove weld, uh, you know, again, we, we, we need to get back to that, what is my reinforcement, what are my allowable tolerances, we don't want to undercut, and we don't want it to be too high, too low, it needs to be just right, it needs to be blended in, just like any other uh, cap weld, the finished weld needs to be a good blended profile and that's what's that's what's hard to do because you know if we travel too fast your weld gets narrow if we travel too slow it gets too tall and wide so you know when we when we when we start welding before we pull the trigger it's like we should know what's going to happen as we're welding and make adjustments in travel speed okay now i see you've got a bevel on this what what is the angle of this bevel uh this bevel should be about 30 degrees so okay. a little less than piping material. Okay, and I notice you've got a gap in here. A, a little less narrow than what you saw on any of the vertical work it that is. we do. It is, it is. Okay, if we run too wide of a, a bevel on horizontal, we will we'll get in trouble on undercutting the top side. Not so much that you would see it out here on, on the inside of the groove, you'd, you'd notice it on the back side. So okay. we're, again, we're trying to control the reinforcement from one side. So we're gonna reduce the bevel, but yet we're actually gonna run hotter. Okay, now you're gonna run a root pass, is that right? I'm gonna run a, a single root pass to fuse both of these pieces of plate. Okay. Uh, when I get welding, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing and if I get in trouble, how I'd correct it. But my values are essentially the same as downhill uh, pipe or plate except now I've reduced this, this uh, root opening. Okay, so what welding process are you gonna use? Gas metal arc welding. Uh, I've got an 035 ER70S6 wire, 75% uh, argon, 25% CO2. I'm running about 18 volts, uh, 230 on my wire feed speed, which equates to about 125 amps. The critical part is maintaining your electrical stick out, which is the distance from your contact tip to your weld metal. In short circuit transfer, we like to keep that right around three eighths of an inch. Okay, well why don't we set up and uh, watch you do the root pass. Okay. Okay. Wyatt, <clears throat> I am going to hold about a 10 or 15 degree gun angle on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag this in here. I wanna see my wire touch both these edges of these beveled plate. Now, if I get in trouble while I'm welding this, I have the option of crawling up here on these beveled edges a little bit, which puts my weld metal in more of a mass, essentially cooling it off. The last thing I wanna do is blow a hole in this or heat this upper beveled edge to the point where I'm not getting reinforcement on the back. Why I started this weld, uh, keeping the wire right in the middle of this groove. This root opening is only about an eighth of an inch, probably 332. And I could kind of hear it going through and looking at the edges of it. Looks like it's flowing pretty good. And I'm using a very slight motion up and down 
making sure that I get into that top edge. I'm not too worried about the bottom edge. Try to stay on the very leading edge of the weld pool. Wyatt, I've completed this root pass. I'll turn this over and show you what we have here for the backside reinforcement penetration. Since we've cleaned this mill scale away from our weld area for a half inch or more, we have bonded and fused into the backside of this plate. We have controlled the amount of reinforcement so that it does not exceed our allowable eighth of an inch. I'm going to take this plate over in the, to the uh, grind table and I'm going to grind the deposits of silicone that are on the, the uh, a toe of the weld on the other side inside the groove. I need to get those glass deposits out there so that they don't, I don't leave them behind. Okay, once you do that, you're going to bring it back. And... I'm going to bring it back. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put two fill passes in here, one on bottom first and the other on top second. Each time I'm going to clean the glass deposits. You can see some of them in here. They're kind of a dark brown looking, milky looking brown, muddy water brown, I should say. They're kind of an odd looking uh, color. Uh, I, I really need to get those out of there. This process lends itself to uh, lack of fusion, and it it's really doesn't burn hot enough to get a lot of those out of there. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to come in here with a pretty much the same gun angle into this groove, except now I'm going to point it down slightly. I want my wire to be pointing into the toe of the previous weld, which was the root pass. And I want to bring this weld out to within about um, a 330 seconds, about an eighth of an inch away from this beveled edge. And the reason for that is when I get through with these two passes, I want a little bit of a shelf and I want a guide to run along from my cap. I'm dragging this in here just to get some build up, build myself a, a, a small shelf for this second fill pass. I'm following the toe of the previous weld, pretty much what we do on all welds when we're stacking them. Wyatt, I've put this first pass in here, uh, the first pass of a two-pass fill, and what I've done is I've left myself a little bit of a shelf in here so I can fit this next pass in here, and I've also left the beveled edge on the bottom. I've left about an eighth inch lip on here, and that's so I can, when I start my first pass of my cap, I have some guide to go off of that's straight. I also want to watch the bottom side toe of the first pass of the cap fuse into this plate down here. This first pass is going to set up the rest of my cap passes. So after I get this second pass of my fill in here, and I get to come in here and, and set this first one in here with the weld metal above the plate and the toe fused into this bottom plate here. Wyatt, I'm putting this second pass in here of the fill pass in this groove. Again, I'm always attacking the toe of the previous weld. I'm going to get my wire down inside so that I can bond the, the, the beveled edge and the previous weld. I 
right, I've got my gun angle again. I'm about 10, 15 degrees backwards. I'm working the wire along the toe of the first fill path. But what I'm really watching is the weld bead melting into the bottom edge of the beveled edge here. Making sure that I have weld metal above the plate to start my reinforcement. Well, if you look along the bottom edge of this, you'll see that it's fused and, and uh, melted into the base metal. Also, the peak of this weld is up above the parent metal. So that's the start of my reinforcement. And I've got some glass deposit. The silicone deposits are present on bottom. They're also on top. So I want to go in and I want to buff those out before I put another pass in. putting this fast in and not only am I watching the top of the weld to see that I'm not getting into the top beveled edge, I'm watching the bottom of the weld to make sure that I'm tying into the highest point or the peak of the first weld so that these will blend together. Okay, my first pass I had some reinforcement above the plate and my second pass the toe of the weld came to the highest point on my first weld so that these two welds blend together. When I put the last pass in, I'm trying to attack the highest point of the second weld and the plate so that the toe of this weld blends into the parent metal up on top. Should have no undercut and these welds should be blended together in a straight line. This last pass went in with the same gun angle as we've been using all the time, a slight drag. And what I was looking for is the bottom of this weld here went to the highest part of the second pass and the toe of the uh, last pass is blended into the top of the parent metal here. So we have no undercut and these should have a nice gentle crown to them blended together. Well, Bob, I'm doing a visual inspection. You're gonna have to tell me what you've got here because from, from my perspective, everything looks great. I, I, I see a, uh, a positive buildup. I don't see any rough edges. I've checked both sides. And, and even from a, a TIG welding inspection, this looks good. <laughs> I just want to tell you. You don't normally stack three passes in TIG welding, do you? I, I try not to. And this, and this looks a little rough looking at it in this light because of the ripple effect of the beads. Uh, you know, if you step back and look at it from your perspective down as an end view, do you see reinforcement and does it look pretty uniform? That's the, that's the main thing. And as you pointed out, we don't have undercut top or bottom. Well, like I say, it, it looks great. And I, I want to offer this to our viewers. We're getting into areas of welding that we typically don't get into uh, in MIG welding, flux core and all that. But we're working with Cali College and they do a lot of work with root passes that are TIG welded, uh, then they're filled with other processes. So if you have a specific request, uh, give us a call or email us. Bob, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.